Good morning, class. I'm Sergeant Thill. I will be your primary instructor for today's block of instruction on education and training in leaders. Feel free to take pictures or notes. This slide deck is unclassified. Moving into our risk assessment. The overall risk assessment is low. However, be cautious of cords as they do pose as a tripping threat. Also, if you have a beverage, please leave it outside the classroom unless it has a cap. Feel free to bring it in, but keep it away from electronics. In case of a fire, know your escape route. Also, COVID-19. Wearing a mask properly over your nose and your mouth and make sure you maintain that six feet of social distancing if possible. Moving into today's scope. Today we're going to focus on training and education. We're going to compare and contrast the two as well as use examples as the ways the Army implements them. And we're also going to get into our own example of a staff sergeant who has been in the military for seven years and we're going to look at his career path on ways he has been trained and educated throughout his time. Here's the Army definition of education. You can find it in AR 350-1 on page 230. I am not going to read it to you, but here are some key takeaways. It is a structured process, meaning it starts from the beginning, middle, and end, step by step. That's the way it's meant to be. That is the way it will be. Also, it is an individual's ability to perform in the unknown situation. So they're going to be training for that unknown situation. They're going to take different methods and different examples throughout history, and they're going to use those so they know how to act when an unknown situation presents itself. Textbooks, history lessons, essays, examples, all kinds of things like that is what they're going to be using to teach these education courses or classes, whatever it may be. Moving on to some examples of education that the Army still the Army uses. NCOASs, that is an educational school, non-commissioned officer education system. So that is going to be BLC for E5, ALC for E6. SLC for E7, and so on. As an E5, you need to have BLC. If I were an E6, I would need to have ALC, so on. Online schooling, that's gonna be college. That's not necessarily military education. That is just education to better your future or better your career outside of the military. MOS specific courses. MOS specific courses are designed to enhance the soldier's ability to perform at his or her job. I, as a 13 Fox, have the option to go to Joint Fires Observer or TMO. I have been to both. They're both two-week courses on educating you on abilities that you do not get out of AIT. ROTC, Service Academies, Senior Military College. Those are all going to be rolled into one, and that is where an officer is going to learn how to be an officer. They are being educated on being an officer. Moving on to the definition of training, or the Army's definition of training. Again, I'm not going to read this to you. It can be found in AR 350-1 on page 239. Here are some key takeaways though. It is a structured pro process, just like education. It's gonna have a start, a middle, and an end. Step by step, that's the way it's meant to be. An individual, individual's ability to perform in the known, in a known situation, that's the key difference between the two. So a soldier is going to train how we fight. That is the big army quote, if you wanna call it a quote, is train how we fight. And it's act, achieve goals. It is meant to achieve goals. A unit will have a squad, platoon, company. They will have all these live fires. And they are meant to achieve goals that the commander has put out. Goals that the, or metal tasks that the commander has made that the, this level needs to meet. The squad level, the platoon level, or the company level. Moving into some examples of training. Live fires, like I said. So... A squad live fire, a platoon live fire, a company live fire, a Calfex, whatever it may be. Things we do here on drum, things we do all across the Army, no matter your MOS, we do live fires and we do training events. BCT AIT, that's your first step in the military. It's the biggest training event you're going to have as a young soldier. It's to get you in the mindset that you're now in the military and the civilian world is not, what to do, is, is not the only thing you know anymore. Now you're going to be training training, training, and then AIT, you're going to be training and educating, but primarily training in your MOS. Weapons training. That's something we can do every day at the company level, the battery level, whatever you're in. You can do it at that level. That's just getting your weapon out of the arms room, putting some magazines in there, empty magazines, and doing mag changes, getting practice, training. Hip pocket classes. Now, this can be a class that your senior leader or myself I went to JFO as an educational course. I can take that education and I can transform it into a training for my soldiers. JRTC NTC, that's the culminating event, the culminating training event from all these live fires that you're gonna do as a brigade. 
as a brigade level exercise or brigade level training event. Moving in to the Venn diagram I have for education and training. Training and education and a leader. Training, it prepares for the known. So we already talked about that. It's based around practice. Practice, practice, practice. Focus on your military occupation. Training doesn't always have to, but it primarily focuses on your MOS specific job, and you're gonna train on that job. Its goal is to improve the unit. With soldiers training, it will now improve the unit when all soldiers have been trained up. And the goal to enhance performance. It's gonna enhance the performance of that unit and their lethality. Education. You're preparing for the unknown. We talked about that earlier. Based around learning material. So you're gonna get books, textbooks, essays, articles. We talked about that one as well. And it may be military occupation, or it could be for your civilian world. If you wanna go be a dentist later, you can start taking online prerequisite courses, online schooling, stuff like that. It doesn't have to pertain specifically to your MOS. Improves the individual. Education is meant to improve the individual and that individual in turn can turn that into training and improve the unit. Goal to enhance knowledge of a subject. You go to a class to gain knowledge of a certain subject. JFO, for example. You go to JFO class to gain knowledge on joint fires observer or controlling aircraft. How to control Apaches, how to control fixed wing. And the two are similar because it's both a structured process and it's a key process that the Army utilizes. All right, moving on to our example. An example. So we have an educated and trained leader. He's a staff sergeant. He's been in the Army for seven years. Staff Sergeant John A. Doe. He is currently the Bravo Company 187 Fire Support Non-Commissioned Officer. That's an E6 slot. He has six soldiers. All soldiers are well-disciplined. He is an approachable NCO, and they are considered the best battalion, or correction, the best team in the battalion. All right, so as we can see, we have a seven-year career path. This is his career, and here we're going to go. First thing he's going to do He's going to graduate BCT. Private John A. Doe graduates BCT. That's his first training event in the Army. Next, he's going to go to AIT and he's going to graduate. That's his second training event that he's had since he's been in the Army. Upon arrival to his unit, he's going to get NCO-driven classes. He's going to have multiple field events, squad, platoon, company, JRTCs, whatever it may be. He's going to have multiple of that weapons training. That is going to be more training that this young soldier is, is getting. Then he's gonna attend JFO. That's his first look at a military educational course. Specialist John Ado is gonna attend JFO. Next, he attends BLC. He recently went to the board, got his P status, and so now he attends BLC. That is an NCOES or another military education. Sergeant John Ado goes to Air Assault. Air Assault is an educational course. It can also be considered a training course. A lot of these have training and education both tied together. Sergeant John A. Doe attends ALC. So Sergeant John A. Doe went to the board again, got his P status, and now he's gonna attend ALC, another education in his career. And then Staff Sergeant John A. Doe begins taking online college. So now he's looking at getting out and he's progressing his civilian world because he needs to go, he wants to go be a dentist. And all this while continuing training events and maintaining education with soldiers. So he is teaching soldiers, he's maintaining Throughout his seven years, he's been doing field events, live fires, platoon, weapons training, qualifications, PT, all that. In summary, it's years of training and education. Though we might not think it, we train every day. Younger soldiers primarily train. As you can see from the last slide, up until he was an E4, that's he was just training. His first look at in military education, a true military education, was when he reached the rank of specialist. He attended JFO just prior to him going to BLC. Career progression equals more education. So as you progress in the Army, you're going to get more education. You're going to be required to go to more schools. As an NCO and E5, you're required to go to BLC. And not only are you going to go to BLC, you're going to go to other schools to make you stand out from the crowd to be an effective leader, right? Also, as you get up in the ranks, I know personally as a 13 series, when you go up, you got to go to 
ALC, SLC, yes, but you also have to go to schools to promote you through your job so you know the systems of your job, whether it be the AFA tags or radios. And education and training equal effectiveness. An educated leader and a trained leader is going to be an effective leader. Do I have any questions? No? Okay. So in summary, we can see that an effective, effective leader is one that is trained and educated in both outside military and inside military and trained all around.